Good evening, this is Troyce, reporting to you from INRI, bringing you what really matters. Every day we wake up to a world whose sickness ranges from a polluted environment to violence everywhere. We are in an age of instant gratification and self-indulgence. There is suffering, mistrust, and enough blame to go around, though no one is willing to accept it. There is someone who predicted all of this and had a solution or plan, if you will, that could help the world in all these areas. He was a Jew through and through, but had a sort of awakening that caused him to follow the, you know, the beat of his own drum. He was in many ways ahead of his time. His name has been heard by most everyone, no matter what their walk in life. It is Jesus of Nazareth. In this age of social media, archeological, anthropological, historical, and reality-based shows that hold our interest, it's no surprise that the search for the historical Jesus continues. He's been depicted in so many different ways since his first set of followers over 2,000 years ago, though several quests with even non-believing scholars jumping on board around the third quest. But more recently, we've seemed to enter the fourth quest, this one bringing together firm archaeological, cultural, sociological, and non-biased information to give us a truer, clearer depiction of the Christ. The works of Bart Ehrman, Dale Allison, Paula Friedson, A.J. Levine, they all support this, but scholarly writing can give part of the picture only. Let's now go to a first-hand source, a woman who has read what the scholars have to say, visited the places Jesus was born, lived, and was crucified, even the places they believe he rose again and ascended into heaven. Okay, as a Messianic believer in Messiah Yeshua, I'm really excited to answer the questions of who was Yeshua, how did he change history, and how does history continue to be changed because of him? So, first of all, I want to say Yeshua was a good Jew. He was an active participant within first century Judaism. He, second temple period times, could be found in the synagogues teaching, um, as was his custom and participating in temple worship. So as a first century believers were not separated or excluded from main Judaism. They were perhaps a sect within larger Judaism. But Yeshua, he kept the Torah, he taught the Torah, he lived Torah. He taught his disciples to keep the Torah and imitate him. His aim was to be and come as Messiah bringing a national redemption. However, we weren't ready for him and it was a wicked generation and not ready for him. But as he um, died, like an allegory of Passover, he died as a Passover lamb um, as a peace offering to bring redemption to Israel and those who believed. The history is big, complicated with persecutions of believers, a Judaism against Judaism, um, Constantine, the Council of Nicaea, all of these edicts against keeping the Sabbath, keeping the festivals, and not doing anything that looked like Judaism. However, there's been a shift and a reconnection and the radical reformation post-Holocaust scholarship, the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, all of these have fueled um, another look at what Yeshua's time would have been, what the religion of Yeshua would have been, and has continued to move um, towards back, back towards Torah and his story, this, this history, his story, is the disciples of Yeshua's having lost the Torah and now the Torah of Moses and now being reconnected to it and finding it again. And there you have it, the latest on the historical Jesus, who he was and depending on what you believe, who he still is. Thank you.